Praise the Lord. Can we rise up as we pray together? Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your goodness. And Lord, we pray what we hear today will lift up our faith, make our faith to grow, and make our faith dynamic in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that where faith is dead, you revive our faith. You bring life into our faith and bring dynamism to our faith in Jesus' name. Bless your people today and help us, Lord, all these examples and exploits of faith we're reading about will take root in every life in Jesus' name. We bless your name for what you have done already. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, Amen in every life. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews 11, we're looking at verse 6. It says in verse 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And then in verse 7, he tells us about Noah by faith. Noah, being warned of God of things, not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness which is by faith. And then in verse 8, we're told about Abraham by faith. Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went in verse 14 it tells us it says for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country and then in verse 15 and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. And then in verse 16, it tells us, But now they desire a better country that is an heavenly. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. It tells us in verse 24, it says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25, it says, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And then in verse 26, it tells us, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Look at this, for he endured as seen him who is invisible. In verse 32, it tells us, and what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. What did they do? Verse 33, who through face of good kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, and then in verse 34, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, was valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. The chapter talks about faith. From verse 1 all through to the end, verse 40, it's telling us about the definition of faith, about the demonstration of faith, 
about the dynamism of faith and about the divine quality of faith and it's not just telling us about definition description demonstration of faith it wants us to so learn the faith that that faith will become a part of our lives we'll be able to stand by faith walk by faith act by faith perform by faith and do everything we need to do in the kingdom of god both small things and great things personal things and uh, uh, prophetic things everything the lord has called us to do that our calling will be fulfilled by faith initial faith at salvation and then ongoing faith as we have Christian experiences of sanctification and the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Faith in the service as we're serving the Lord, that we serve the Lord by faith. And as we face obstacles and difficulties and crossroads and challenges, we subdue everything and we move every mountain by faith. And then at the end of our lives, we'll be able to finish by faith and then enter into glory by faith. From grace to glory, from the commencement to the consummation, all by faith and without faith it's impossible to please god for he that cometh to god must believe that god is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently and seriously and in a committed way continually and courageously seek the lord if we're like that and since we're going to be like that our faith will work without any hindrance in jesus name my faith will work my faith will work your faith will work in jesus name and it is that working of faith that makes us to come side by side with all these heroes of faith and we're able to live and we're able to walk and live according to the pattern of faith that we learn in Hebrews chapter 11 and I pray everything we learn today will be transferred to every life in Jesus name Amen. to my life I said to my life it will be done in Jesus name the message today is the rewardable faith of diligent seekers of the kingdom there's a kingdom, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of power, the eternal kingdom where diligently and seriously and passionately and zealously seeking that and we seek that by faith and that faith is rewarded by the Lord. There are three things we're looking at today as we study these verses. Number one, impossible worthiness without faith. For us to be worthy, to even be called children of God, for us to be worthy to be called the servants of God, for us to be worthy to do anything in the kingdom, recognized by heaven, it must be by faith. Impossible worthiness without faith. Number two, imperishable worthiness wonders of faith the wonders that take place in our lives the work of grace that take place in our lives the exploits that take place in our ministry in our services imperishable that you cannot bury anywhere anytime imperishable wonders of faith number three impeccable walk of faith as we are walking with the Lord walked up before me and is that perfect and Enoch walked with God and he calls us to a consistent walk in the Lord that walk is only possible by faith and it is that walk that makes us to have progress in the Lord and then we're climbing every mountain we're subduing every problem as we're walking with the Lord impeccable walk of faith let's come to number one number one we're looking at impossible worthiness without faith let's come back now to Hebrews chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 6 Hebrews 11 and we're reading from verse 6 but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe not that he may believe that there's no option here this is compulsory and he must believe that 
he is that is god is who he says he is and god is ever present and god is ever omnipotent and god is the person that fulfills every promise that he has made he must believe that god is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him we're looking at Acts of the Apostle, chapter 13, and we're reading about verse 46. Acts, chapter 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas watched bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing that he put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy, unworthy, unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. They judge themselves unworthy of eternal life because they will not believe. If you're going to be worthy of eternal life, or be partakers of the promises of God, of the goodness of God, of the grace of God, you must have faith. If you do not believe the Lord, have confidence in the Lord, trust the Lord, you judge yourself unworthy of the provision that the Lord has made for us. Impossible worthiness without faith. Three things we're looking at here. On the days, number one, one, no possibility of pleasing God without faith. Not possible. You cannot please God without faith. Number two, no pardon or purity by grace without faith. For us to be pardoned, for us to be forgiven, for us to have assurance of salvation, for us to know that our names are written in the book of life, to be worthy of that, that we are called the children of God that were called the disciples of Christ, that were called the followers of Christ, that we are members of the family of God, there must be the grace that comes through faith. It says no pardon or purity without faith. Number three, no place in paradise with God without faith. For us to get there eventually, to make heaven at last, we believe for salvation, we possess sanctification, and we have all the goodness of the provision of Calvary all by faith. And then we're able to have a place in heaven, a place in paradise, but no place in paradise with God without faith. Let's look at number one. Number one, no possibility of pleasing God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 5. In Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 5, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, rapture, before he's being taken out of this world to heaven without seeing death, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And remember, he pleased God by faith. We cannot please God, no possibility of pleasing God without faith. That's why it says in verse 6, it says in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, he that cometh to God, that generation came to God, this generation coming to God, and the future generation will come to God. Any generation, any dispensation, any century, any moment, any time, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that 
diligently seek him as we look at first corinthians chapter 10 reading from verse 5 it tells us about the people that god was not well pleased with and why because they didn't have the trust and the confidence and the faith to believe god that he is who he says he is and we are who he says we are and we have the promise fulfilled that he said he has given because of that lack of faith and trust and confidence believing god that's the reason why he was not pleased with them but with many of them those Israelites that came out of the land of Egypt and they were on their way to the land of Canaan with many of them God was not well pleased and because he wasn't pleased with them they were overthrown in the wilderness then it says in verse 6 it tells us now these things were our examples they didn't please him they ate his manna, they didn't please him. They drank his make all water, they didn't please him. He overcame their enemies for them, they didn't please him. He made them to pass through the Red Sea, but he was not pleased in them because they didn't have faith in him now. These things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things at they also lost it. It tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 15. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, reading from verse 15. Who both killed the Lord Jesus. You know why they killed him? They didn't believe him as the Messiah. They did not believe him as the Savior. They did not believe him as the person that came to fulfill all those Old Testament prophecies. They counted him an impostor. They counted him a blasphemer. They did not accept that he was the Son of God as he declared. It was unbelief. It was lack of faith. That's why they did what they did. Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God. They please not God because they didn't have faith in Christ, trust in Christ, confidence in Christ. They did not please God and are contrary to all men. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. They said they should not mention the name of Jesus because they did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Savior. And that did not please God. And then it goes on to say they were hindering us from preaching to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins away. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 6. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 6. For to be carnally minded is dead, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And then in verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And then in verse 8, so then, they that are in the flesh, not born again, they that are in the flesh, having the works of the flesh, they that are in the flesh, graceless, not having grace or godliness, and they do not have the goodness of God in their lives, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. For us to please God and then to so please God that He will bless us with salvation, we have to have faith. Number one, no possibility of pleasing God without faith. Number two, now, no pardon or purity by grace without faith. No possibility of having pardon, having purity by grace without faith it tells us in luke chapter 8 verse 12 it says those by the wayside are they that hear they hear the word then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts lest 
they should believe and be saved if they don't believe they cannot be saved and satan knows that so every time those people who are not fully concentrating on what they are hearing every time they hear the word of salvation and the word of the grace of God, Satan comes immediately and he takes that word of salvation away from their heart and they cannot believe and they are not saved. He tells us in James chapter 1, reading from verse 6. James chapter 1, reading from verse 6, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Are you asking for salvation? Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Are you asking for sanctification, holiness, without which no man shall save the Lord? Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Are you asking for the grace to stand on compromising and for the energy of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit to stand and to walk straight in the way of the Lord? That takes grace. If that's what you're asking for, let him ask in faith and nothing wavering. Are you asking for solidity? steadfastness in your life that the wind of temptation the wind of trial will not blow you down and shake you and destroy you if you are asking for that kind of spiritual stamina let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed and then in verse 7 he says let not that man think that he shall receive receive any sin salvation any sin sanctification anything power or strength anything healing anything deliverance any miracle any promise of the lord let not that man who is not having faith who is wavering let not that man think that he shall receive any sin of the lord in verse 8 it tells us a double-minded man is unstable in all all his ways if we're going to have peace with God and we're going to have pardon for our sins and we're going to have the assurance of heaven we must have faith in our heart in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 it tells us therefore be justified by faith being forgiven by faith being saved by faith being transformed by faith, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace because all the enmity between us and God, everything is cancelled by faith. We look at his promise, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, I will give you peace, I'll give you pardon, I will give you total regeneration and restoration, and that is by faith. The people who are always finding, Am I saved? Am I not saved? Today they say they are saved, and then tomorrow there is confusion. Am I in the faith? It's because they do not have this absolute trust in the Lord. God said, Whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast away. Trust that, believe that hold on to that and then your sins are forgiven and your life is transformed therefore being justified by faith we are peace with god through our lord jesus christ it tells us in verse 8 look at verse 8 over there it says but god commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners not that we're turning over a new leaf before we have been saved. Not that we're going to whitewash our lives before we are saved. And not that we're going to be copying believers and trying to live the Christian life without faith before we become believers. It's why we were yet sinners that Christ died for us. And then he says in verse 9, Verse 9 tells us, still talking about the people who are justified, the people who are saved, the people who are born again, the people who have their sins forgiven, and all by the grace and the faith that we have in the Lord. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath 
through him we have pardon because we have faith in christ we have peace with god because we have faith in christ with that forgiveness we also have freedom he sets us free as we believe on the lord jesus christ he tells us in acts chapter 15 reading from verse 9 acts chapter 15 verse 9 and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith purity of heart holiness of heart sanctification experience approaching of the damnic nature the circumcision of heart that leads to so much purity from the heart to the life of man it comes by faith purifying their hearts by faith and in verse 11 in verse 11 it says but we believe that through grace through the grace of the lord jesus we shall be saved even as they as they that he says all the jews have been saved so the gentiles are saved and they're sanctified and they're filled with the holy ghost and power for service all by faith we have peace with god we have pardon from god we have purity of heart we have the power of the holy spirit and we have progress in our christian journey and we have all the provision of the lord made available to us all by faith in the lord without faith all that is impossible let's look at number three here there's no place in paradise with god without faith to get to heaven we must have faith those children of israel came out of the land of egypt and they were going to the land of canaan and to the land of promise many of them could not make it because of unbelief on the day when god visited them in egypt he said when i see the blood i will pass over you every one of them applied the blood of the lamb and then the angel of death passed over and because they believed the word of god through uh, moses they slaughtered the lamb they shed the blood they applied the blood and as the angel of death passed by he saw the mark of the blood he saw that they had the substituted lamb who had died for them and because of that substitute that's how they were saved the same thing with us christ has died and by faith when we apply the blood of jesus christ and the lord said when i see the blood i will pass over you now they came out of captivity they came out of slavery they came out of bondage and they came out of their past life by faith in the blood of the lamb and now when they got to the wilderness they did not keep on believing and because of that they could not enter the land of promise the same thing with the believers now as we have been saved by coming out of the world and coming out of sin by faith for us to get to heaven and to get to that paradise we must keep on believing in the lord in hebrews chapter 3 looking at verse 12 hebrews chapter 3 looking at verse 12 take heed brethren lest there be in any of you brethren they had believed brethren they were members of the body of christ brethren they were saved brethren their names were rich in the book of life already yet he told them take it brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Why did he say that? He's telling us about the example of the children of Israel. Look at verse 19. He said, So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They came out by faith. They should have been walking by faith and they should have entered in by faith. But so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 1. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, let us therefore fear, 
lest the promise being left to us of entering into his rest any of you should see him to come short of it and then in verse 2 he tells us for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them unto us the good news had been given as well as unto them then it says but the word preached did not profit them not be mixed or faith in them that heard it that was their problem look at uh, verse 6 it says in verse 6 seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief it was provided for them it was proclaimed to them it was preached to them they could have entered in only one thing stopped them the will of god was that they will enter in but unbelief stopped them that they couldn't enter in verse 11 in verse 11 it says let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same manner the same example of unbelief romans chapter 11 reading from verse 20 in romans chapter 11 verse 20 well because of unbelief they were broken up and thou standest by faith be not high-minded for fear in verse 21 it says for if god spared not the natural branches take heed lest he also spare thee not he said you see those jews they were the children of abraham they were the natural branches they were the false partakers of the promise of god and yet god did not spare their unbelief they couldn't enter in we are gentiles he now says if the natural branches were not spared because of unbelief we gentiles who are believed and we're coming to the kingdom and we come to the grace of god we should take heed lest he does not spare us to then verse 22 he says behold therefore the goodness and the severity of god on them which fell severity but toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise if you don't continue believing god trusting god having confidence in god standing on the promises all the time otherwise if you don't keep on diligently seeking him by faith otherwise thou also shall be caught up i pray will not be caught off in jesus name we're coming to point number two now the imperishable wonders of faith imperishable wonders of faith we're looking at three things say number one the promise of the father that's a wonder number two the power of faith that's a wonder number three the portion of the faithful our portion that's a wonder and all these wonders we have by faith in god by faith in christ by faith in the word now how do you know you have faith in God? You cannot see God face to face. You cannot see God in the natural. You cannot see God in the physical. He has given us his word. He and his word are inseparable. When you believe his word, you believe him. When you accept his word, you accept him. When you trust his word, you trust him. The word is the representation of God unto us. And so any word he has given, you ask yourself, if God were here in the physical, in the natural, that's all he will say. And to say I believe God means I believe his word without any shadow of doubt and without misinterpreting 
or misapplying the word i have implicit faith in the word and since the word is the connection between us and god i believe his word i believe him number one the promise of the father the promise of the father he tells us in um, in luke chapter 24 reading from verse 49 and behold i sent the promise of my father upon you that's the lord jesus christ he says i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high the promise of the father is the promise of the holy ghost holy ghost coming upon the sanctified believer and then will receive the power from on high the power from heaven the power to do and the power to be all he has assigned and all he has appointed that way will be and because they believed that's why they waited because he told them tarry tarry in the city of jerusalem they believed that's why they tarried they were expecting you know? that's why they tarried and they trusted the word of the lord that's why they tarried the same thing with us you know when we hear the word or learn the word in secular subjects when we go to college we hear so as to know and so when they ask us what we have learned what we know we write it down for them in the christian faith it's a different thing we learn to do not just to know we learn so we can do it and we learn so we can obey and when he said i send the promise of my father upon you tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until it might take three days or ten days or twenty days until ye be been dealing with power from on high we learn to do not just that we know each in our mind or in our head we're told in verse 53 look at verse 53 there it says and they were continually in the temple praising and blessing god amen look at acts chapter one we're reading from verse four acts chapter one reading from verse four and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem the world is perishing we need to take the gospel to Samaria. we need to take the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth are you going to run out without the power are you going to just pursue the goal and pursue uh, the assignment without the power get the power and then uh, you can move on to all those places where they're perishing he says they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which says he he have heard of me and then in verse 5 it says for john to be baptized with water but he shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence what were they going to have look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 but he shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth you receive the power force before you then go out in jerusalem in judea in samaria to the uttermost part of the earth declaring the word of god with conviction declaring the word of God with unction, declaring the word of God with saving grace. And then it will bring conviction to the people who are hearing. They will call upon the Lord. They waited until they received. Look at chapter 2, verse 33. Acts chapter 2, we're reading from verse 33. It says, therefore, being by the right hand of God, God exalted that is Christ rose from the dead 
then he went to heaven and now he's seated on the right hand of majesty on high and is by the right hand side of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. He has shared for this which ye now see and hear. Look at verse 38, verse 39. It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal and the cleansing, the forgiveness, the remission, the blotting out of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in verse 39 for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. He's talking about us, the Gentiles, to all that are far off. He's talking about us, those who are far away in centuries to come and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The promise is ours and the promise of the Father. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be sanctified and then to wait and to tarry until that power of the Holy Ghost is given unto us. Look at number two. It is number two here is the power of faith. The power of faith. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When we have faith in God, although we have not got it in a tangible way, but that faith makes us to know it's done already. And it's like we've already got it. And it is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things that we have not seen look at verse 33 in verse 33 it tells us it says through faith the subdued kingdoms not just the subdued their own little difficulties and their own little challenges or we have faith all the challenges and all the difficulties that the kingdoms of this world might keep on us we subdue, we overcome. You know, the, the faith we're talking about is not that I had a headache and then I had faith and the headache went away. Well, thank God for that. And I had this stomach upset and by faith, you know, I prayed and the stomach upset went away. Praise the Lord for that. We're talking about kingdoms, the kingdoms of darkness and the kingdoms of evil and the kingdoms of evil men that by faith we can subdue all those kingdoms will subdue them in Jesus name Amen. by faith wrought righteousness that the righteousness of the Lord transpired into our lives we demonstrate that righteousness and even the devil with all his dirty servants will not soil that righteousness in our lives in Jesus name by faith they obtain promises all the promises that were for their age and for their period, all the promises for their generation, they obtained those promises, even the promises that were not for their generation. At the generation of Enoch, the promise of rapture was not for that generation. And yet Enoch went before and beyond his generation and he obtained the promises all the promises of God the Lord will fulfill in our lives in Jesus name dividing the Red Sea that was strange it was done having manna from heaven that was strange it was done and parting river Jordan that was strange it was done overcoming all the land of the Canaanites confidently that was done because their faith in God and making the walls of Jericho to fall flat and then for them to enter in that was almost incredible but it was done everything that appears impossible you will do everything that appears incredible you will do and what appears for another generation you will even receive that in Jesus name my brother my sister it's time was touched 
being a fidgety and uh, trembling uh, and uh, you know fretting uh, and looking for you know this person to pray for me that person to pray for me you will stand up like a giant you will move like a giant and like all those people like Gideon like Barak and Samson and Jephthah and Daniel and Samuel and all those worthies of old like they stood and they confronted all the challenges before them and they subdued and they overcame you will subdue you will overcome we're not learning all this just to know we're learning to do you will overcome goliath you will overcome nebuchadnezzar you'll overcome the den of lions in jesus name today you will not be as you were yesterday new strength new power new confidence new courage new victory yeah. new success in your life yeah. everything the lord has ordained you will achieve you will not run back from goliath yeah. with a sling with a stone you'll overcome yeah. and look at that look at that david without any weapon with a spear hand he tore the bear into pieces and tore the lion into pieces oh lord raise up another david in our generation another elijah in our generation another man of faith and woman of faith in our generation in our church in jesus name where are the people you are a candidate of such great faith in Jesus' name. Then look at it. It says, the obtained promises, they stopped the mouths of lions. And then in verse 34, it tells us, they quench the violence of fire. No fire will burn you. No fire will burn your family. Whether spiritual, visible, invisible, whoever, uh, whatever Satan is choosing to bring that fire, you will quench the fire in Jesus' name. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, we are made strong. Let the weak say, Let the weak say, What's valiant in fight, touch to flight the armies of the aliens it will happen in jesus name the lord will help me i said the lord will help me hebrews chapter 6 reading from verse 12 hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 it tells us that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith, followers of them who through faith, it's not saying that we should follow them who through fear ran away from the battlefield, who through fear succumbed to the devil, who through fear fell into temptation. It says no. Leave all that group apart, aside, and follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You will inherit the promises in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 16. It says, let us come boldly, therefore, to the very throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace grace to help in time of need i will find grace to help in the time of my need you will find grace to help in time of need every area of your life in jesus name let's look at number three now number three the portion of the faithful the portion of the faithful in psalm 73 we're reading from verse 24 in psalm 73 verse 24 thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory the lord will grant you his counsel 
and will guide you at every crossroad and you will make it to the right path in Jesus name and afterward receive you to glory afterward after he has guided you and you follow the guidance after he has led you and you follow the leading after every area of your life has been controlled by the Lord guided by the Lord and you are following that, that guidance afterward he will receive you to glory he will receive me to glory look at verse 25 then it says whom have I in heaven but thee and there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Isn't that sanctification? That is, there is nothing that I desire in heaven except the Almighty God Himself. And there is none on earth that I desire beside the Lord. That all the pursuit of earthly things, all that is taken from your heart. I want to be this, I want to be this. I only want to be what God has ordained He wants me to be. I only want to be only what God has appointed me to be. I don't want to be like that man, that woman, only what God has ordained. Because there is nothing upon earth that I desire beside him. And then in verse 26, he tells us, he says, my flesh and my heart fail it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God, my portion forever. The Savior, my portion forever. The Sanctifier, my portion forever. The Shepherd of Israel, my portion forever. The Healer, my portion forever. The Deliverer, my portion forever. And also the Sustainer, the one that has almighty power and nothing can overcome his power. He the God of heaven and earth. He the creator of heaven and earth. He is my portion forever. He'll be your portion in Jesus' name. If the healer is your portion, you are healed. If the deliverer is your portion, you are delivered. If the helper is your portion, you are helped. If the sustainer is your portion, you are sustained. If the one, the God of glory is your portion, he'll be glorified in your life in Jesus' name. If the one that never lost any battle is your portion, you will overcome every battle of life in Jesus' name. If the one who has called you and put you in place and he said, I will be with you, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. If he is your portion, you'll not feel lonely, you'll not feel like an orphan, you will know his presence and his power and his provision is with you all the time. You will not lack, you will not fail and you will not succumb, you will not give up at the middle of the road in Jesus' name. He is my peace, my portion forever. He will be your portion all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27 there. In verse 27, for lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a warring from thee. In verse 28, then it says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I'm saved, I need to draw nearer unto God. I'm sanctified, I need to draw nearer unto God. He makes me a partaker of his nature, of holiness. Yet, I need to draw near unto God. I'm baptized, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And yet, I need to draw near unto God. He spoke to me the other day. I need to draw nearer now so he can speak to me even today. You need to be drawing nearer and nearer and nearer unto the Lord so that that anything you need and everything you need for personal life and for your family and for your ministry and for your service as you are drawing near to God every time it may supply in, in your life in Jesus name it is good for me and for every believer to draw near to God I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy 
works, it will happen in Jesus' name. Psalm 119, verse 57, it says, Thou art my portion, O Lord. Thou art my portion, you are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. Look at verse 60. In verse 60, it tells us, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. You are my portion. You give me the power. You give me the strength to be obedient and to walk straight. And since you are my portion, there's no lack of strength. There's no lack of vitality or vigor. There's no lack of anything spiritual. Because of that, I made his with the strength you have given me in the portion. I delayed not to keep thy commandments 142 psalm 142 we're looking at verse 4 psalm 142 we're reading from verse 4 i looked on my right hand and beheld and there was no man that would know me refuge failed me no man cared for my soul and then in verse 5 he said when i couldn't find any man i cried unto thee O lord I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. The God who is greater than all men, even though I couldn't find any man to help, any man to uplift, when I cried unto the Lord, He gave me what I needed to sustain me for the hour, for the moment, because He is my refuge and He is my portion in the land of the living. It will, it will sustain you all through your life in Jesus. Jesus name and let's look at point number three now point number three the impeccable walk of faith that's what he calls us to walking by faith and moving by faith and progressing by faith and not allowing any stumbling block to stop us keep walking not allowing any mountain to stop you keep on walking not allowing any suggestion of the devil to stop you keep on walking and i thank god because he has given you grace say he has given me grace and you know no obstacle will ever stop you no bad news will ever stop you and no fear of situation circumstance will ever stop you in jesus name the lord who brought you through today uh, across and above all those hurdles he will bring you through every time say he will bring me through every time and you keep on walking impeccably without fearing any mountain any hurdle any kind of difficulty or any danger you will always come through in jesus name three things number one the proper walk of faith the proper walk of faith number two the positive word of faith number three the purposeful work of faith look at number one the proper walk of faith in john chapter 8 we're reading from verse 11 john chapter 8 verse 11 she said no man lord jesus said unto her and jesus said unto her neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more when you meet jesus face to face and you have faith in the lord jesus christ and even when the law is saying you should be stoned and the projectors the perpetrators of the law they say you, you should be stoned and the religious people of the old testament old covenant law they say you should be stoned jesus has forgiveness for you he has pardon for you and as everybody is condemning you that condemnation will not take effect in your life in jesus name and the jesus who died for you on the cross of calvary will say neither do i condemn thee and then he will give you the power to live in a new life go and sin no more go and sin no more I thought anyone that believes that will say, Amen. Yeah. 
in verse 12 in verse 12 it says then speak jesus again to them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness shall not walk in secrecy shall not walk in deception shall not walk in hidden sin shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life that's the proper walk of faith it tells us in galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 galatians chapter 2 verse 20 it says i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live old self-life crucified old habitual sinning crucified old traditional behavior crucified old creatures life all crucified i am crucified with christ what people knew me for in the past all that is crucified what i knew myself for in the past that i didn't have any power in the old nature to overcome all that now is crucified i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me Christ lives in me. Understand, uh, when Christ comes to the believer, he doesn't empty himself of grace, empty himself of goodness, empty himself of strength, empty himself of power. He comes in all his power. He comes in all his grace. He comes with all his divine authority and ability. And then he enters into us. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If if anyone hears my voice, I, with all my grace, I, with all my goodness, I, with all my godliness, I, with all my authority, I, with all my power, will enter into him. The way some people live, you will think that the Christ in them is powerless, the Christ in them is graceless, the Christ in them does not have any strength at all. But no, when he enters into the believer, he enters with everything that he has. That's why Paul the Apostle could say, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He loved me so much, he blotted out my sin, he blotted out the old nature, and now he gives me a new nature. He gave himself for me. We're looking at First John chapter 2, reading from verse 6. First John chapter 2, verse 6, it says, He that abideth in him ought himself also so to walk. I am the true vine, and ye are the branches, and we are part of him. We are attached to the true vine, and the same virtue in the vine is in the branch. And we say we abide in him. He that says he abideth in him of himself, also so to walk even as he walked, even as Christ walked, that is how we walk. It tells us in First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one. First Peter chapter two, reading from verse twenty-one, it says that for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, having left us an example. Having left us an example, it says, I have demonstrated it for you, the proper work and the practical work and the way you should live. And now I give you my grace and I give you myself. And now I've left you an example that we should follow his steps. I pray God will give us the grace and the strength and the power and the steadfastness to always follow after his perfect example in Jesus name we're looking at number two here number two is a positive word of faith if Christ lives in us 
the word that comes out of us will be the word of Christ because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh out of the abundance of the earth he lives in us is prominent in us is present in us is preeminent in us and because Christ is present because Christ is prominent and because Christ is preeminent in us the words that come out will be the words that can only come out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus the positive word of faith we're looking at Romans chapter 10 verse 8 for what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. We preach it, you hear it, you possess it. When you're going to talk, what will come out of your mouth will be the word of faith, not the word of unbelief, not the old word of faithlessness and the old word of fear and the old word of talking like the world but now Christ lives in you and the word you have heard that saved you is the word of faith the word you have heard that sanctified you is the word of faith because the word of unbelief does not save the word of fear does not sanctify and the word of the world does not fill us and baptize us with the Holy Ghost. The word you heard that saved you, the word you heard that sanctified you, the word you heard that filled you with courage and confidence and strength and the power of the Holy Ghost. That word you possess, that's the word you speak out, the word of faith which were preached. And I pray that same word will be magnified in your life in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, reading from verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith. We have in the same spirit of faith. Have you ever thought about that? We have the same spirit of faith that Paul had. The same spirit of faith that Peter had. The same spirit of faith that John had. The same spirit of faith that those, those servants of God in the New Testament. The same spirit of faith that they had. And the same word that came upon them. And they said, be of good cheer. Be not afraid. There will be no loss in any of our lives. If we have the same spirit, we're going to speak the same word. And then. Now Peter and John looking at that man saying silver and gold have I none but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he held him by the hand and lifted him up if we have the same spirit of faith we're going to speak the same word I have the same spirit of faith I said I have the same spirit of faith Anytime you catch yourself saying something negative, say, hey, stop that. The spirit of faith in Paul is in me. The spirit of faith in Peter is in me. They didn't talk like that. I will not talk like that. You will talk positive. Your words will be powerful. Your words will do exploits in Jesus' name we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believe and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak we also believe and therefore speak say that i also believe and therefore speak say that again you know something has happened and then somebody says i'm dying i'm dying hold on do you really believe that no you don't don't say what you don't believe they're crushing me they destroyed me they destroyed my ministry hold on do you actually believe that 
that when Jesus said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it do you actually believe that there's somebody more powerful than Christ who will destroy the ministry God has given you do you believe that then don't say that say what you believe we also believe and therefore speak what do I believe every day I'll be getting stronger what do I believe as my days are so shall my strength be what do I believe he will never leave me he will never forsake me what do I believe by his stripes I am healed what do I believe? Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth all my iniquities and healeth all my diseases. What do I believe? Before he prays, I will answer. While he's yet speaking, I will hear him. What do I believe? By his stripes. What do you believe? I said, what do you believe? only declare only speak out what you believe it says we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believe therefore have i spoken we also believe i also believe and therefore speak and it will be confirmed in your life in jesus name number three here is the purposeful work of faith the purposeful work of faith every work of unbelief will not be recognized in heaven you are doing something and then there is emptiness in your heart and there is unbelief in your heart and you don't really believe that this is what God wanted you to do and you don't really believe it will germinate and bring forth fruit that thing will not be recognized in heaven before you do anything understand what God will recognize in the walk walking by faith and then it's the word of faith and then the work of faith and as you do that your life will be productive and what you do will be rewarded in heaven in Jesus name look at first Thessalonians chapter 1 we're looking at verse 3 first Thessalonians chapter 1 we're looking at verse 3 remembering without ceasing your work of faith that's what will remember the eternity that's what God will remember that's what God will record down remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father our Father in heaven we're looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 we're bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is meet because your faith groweth exceedingly your faith grows exceedingly your faith will not decrease your faith will increase in jesus name if your faith is increasing if your faith is growing your work also of faith will grow and what you are not able to do yesterday you will do today what you are not able to do before at this present time you will do it in jesus name he tells us he's thanking God for us he's thanking God for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly and the charity and the love and the service of every one of you toward all men toward each other abounded this work will continue to prosper in your hands in Jesus name Revelation chapter 2 we're reading from verse 19 Revelation chapter 2 look at verse 19 it says I know thy works and I know thy charity and I know thy service and I know thy faith and thy patience and thy words and the last to be more than the first and the last to be more than the first I didn't hear your amen 
you, you know, there are people who feel their last works should be less than the first. They say, I've done quite a lot. I'm growing tired now. I've done quite a lot. And there are other people who are coming behind. Now I'm going to retire. And their last works are much, much less than their first works. But you know what Christ commended in this church? He said, I know your works. I know your love. I know your service. I know your faith. I know your patience. I know your perseverance. I know your works. And the last works to be more than the first. I pray God will show you a wider field. It will show you greater things to do. And you will do them in Jesus' name. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 26, verse 26 tells us, He that overcometh, who is that? He that overcometh, who is that? With all the grace available, you ought to overcome. With all the power available, you ought to overcome. With the promise of the Father on your life, you ought to overcome. And with the possibilities of faith in your life, you ought to overcome. With the proclamation you are hearing every time, you ought to overcome. And with the new zeal, and with the new anointing, and the unction that the Lord is putting upon your life, you must be an overcomer. You'll overcome the flesh. You'll overcome the world. You overcome the devil, you overcome every enemy, and you overcome anything that will pull you down. You'll be rising higher and higher in Jesus' name. Who is the overcomer? The Lord will make you an overcomer in every situation in Jesus' name. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works and keep it my works and keep it my works unto the end is not you know giving up and saying i think i've done enough until your last breath and keep it my works unto the end to him will i give power over the nations power in your life power in your mouth authority in your ministry and all the authority and the power you need to fulfill your announcement, the Lord make it available for you, even at this very time, in Jesus' name. They that know their God shall do exploits. Anybody knowing God there? You know God more, you trust God more, you believe God more, you have faith in God more. You will do exploits in Jesus' name. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I want to manifest more faith in you and I want to have this faith that will never look back, this faith that will not fall, and this faith that will never give up, this faith that will climb every mountain, this faith that will remove every hurdle, this faith that will remove every challenge in my way. And then till the end, I'll keep on and on and on doing the work the Lord himself has committed into my hands you will not fail open your mouth and pray and tell the Lord you know as you are coming to the Lord and as you are praying you must believe God because without faith without trust without confidence without leaning on God without trusting God without having confidence in God no man can please him but he that cometh to God as you come to God in prayer as you come to God uh, lifting up your voice unto the Lord he that cometh to God you are coming to God with reassurance you are coming to God for real holiness you are coming to God with real power from heaven he that cometh to God must believe that he is he is he is who he says he is. He is Father, he is God, he is creator, he is the supplier. He is what he says he is, and he will do what he says he will do. He that cometh to God must believe. Don't you believe? He that cometh to God must believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. I believe what the Bible says about you. I believe what Jesus says about you. I believe you are my Father. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Why don't you diligently seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. 
power added unto you, grace added unto you, all possibilities added unto you. Why don't you seek the Lord and understand all the promises of God are going to be fulfilled in your life. Please remember, if you're going to get anything from the Lord, you come with faith. You want more grace, come with faith. You want sanctification, come with faith. You want holiness, come with faith. And you want the strength and the power that will help you. You'll never look back, come with faith. You need a miracle in your life. You need a miracle in your family. You need sustaining power of the Lord, come with faith. You must have faith in the Lord. There is no pardon without faith. There's no purity without faith. There's no power without faith. There are no possibilities without faith. All the possibilities in your life, they must come as a result of having faith in the Lord. And there's no paradise without faith. If you don't have faith in God, there'll be no place in paradise for such a man, for such a woman. Keep on believing, keep on believing, keep on believing. Resurrection of the Christian life, revival in the Christian life, rejuvenation, re-energizing in the Christian life, reformation, renewal in the Christian life. Everything comes by faith. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him believe what you are seeking the lord for right now he will grant unto you remember the promise of the father he shall receive power not weakness he shall receive strength not weakness he shall receive authority and uh, not a uh, discouragement he shall receive strength and it is not a weakness the power of the holy ghost in your life that's what you will give that's what you will give your sage by faith you got saved you're sanctified by faith you got sanctified and now the power of the holy ghost the anointing of the holy ghost the unction of the holy ghost and then uh, that great authority he receives Irresistible authority in ministry. That's how you can have that all by faith. And that is what the Father has promised us, is giving us all the promises, precious promises of all things pertaining to life and to godliness. That's what you will give. Why don't you ask Him something spiritual, something heavenly, something high, something great? something extraordinary something beyond what you had before more courage more strength more power more divine ability more divine sustainers what he had promised so that you'll not be as weak as you were yesterday you'll not be downtrodden as you were yesterday you not be fidgeting and fearing as you were doing yesterday, but new strength, a new power, a new authority in your life. All that included in the promise of the Father that you stand before every Pharisee, you stand before Sanhedrin, and you stand before all the opposers of the gospel, and you will stand in power, and you will stand in strength, and you will stand in authority and you'll be able to tell them there's no other name that is given on earth among men that can save except the name of jesus they'll not be able to stop your mouth shut your mouth and they'll not be able uh, to stop you on your journey to glory the power of the lord available the power of the Lord available, and it's by faith. Faith has power. Power to move mountains, faith has power. Power to subdue all enemies, faith has power. F power to quench all the fire of the enemy, faith has power. Power to stop the mouth of lions, faith has power power to climb every mountain power to overcome every difficulty and power to overcome every challenge in your life faith has power tell the lord tell the lord i believe in you 
all the power I need, all the unction I need, all the authority I need, all the possibilities for ministry I need. Everything is available as you believe the Lord because faith has power and then he is your portion forever. The Almighty is your portion forever. The Creator is your portion forever. The healer is your portion forever. The deliverer is your portion forever. The I am that I am is your portion forever. The one that conquered Pharaoh is your portion forever. The, the one that conquered Nebuchadnezzar is your portion forever. And the one that conquered Herod, that's your portion forever. And the one that made all those worthy of old to overcome and to subdue and to obtain promises, that's your portion forever don't act and don't talk like an orphan like I don't have this I don't have that you have everything you need in Christ you have everything you need in the Lord you have everything you need all the unction you need all the power you need all the authority you need all the courage you need you have everything in Christ as God helped you and you came and you jumped all hurdles and you are here today day in spite of bad news in spite of that in spite of this every area of your life you will overcome every area of your life you will subdue everything you are saying from the territory from the kingdom of darkness you are an overcomer already in the name of the lord he'll be with you he will never leave you he will never forsake you and with that faith you are able to walk a proper walk you walk like christ he lives inside you the old self is crucified the old habit is crucified and is dead and buried and now you are able to live victoriously you are able to live righteously because you are crucified and yet you live and not you but christ liveth inside you the christ of all grace liveth inside you the christ of all possibilities liveth inside you the christ that overcomes satan evil spirit and every sickness that christ liveth inside you because he loved you so much and he gave himself for you and therefore you also have the positive word of faith in your mouth no negative word anymore what's of unbelief what's of fear what's of dejection what's of rejection what's of giving up discouragement never now you have the same spirit of faith as paul as peter as john and because you have that same spirit of faith you speak what's of faith you speak to that mountain you speak to that river you speak to that enemy you speak to that difficulty or challenge and everything will be taken away taken away you become an overcomer by the words of your mouth and your work of faith is purposeful your work of faith is purposeful you know you are going to succeed you know your work is going to be rewarded and you know heaven is looking at your work and heaven is energizing you for that work of faith it will be done it has been done you are no more the discouraged dejected person you used to be things are different now something happened to you the work of faith the word of faith and the work of faith manifested in your life and you'll be victorious every moment of your life every day of your life for the rest of your life every day every day and you'll keep the work to the very edge you keep the work to the very end 
and your last works will be more than your former works. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious workers in the vineyard said, Amen. The Lord has answered your prayer. You are stronger now than you were yesterday. The Lord has lifted you higher than you were formerly. And you will not come down. Up. Forward. Upward. Making progress. Every mountain before you will clear away. Every impossibility in your life will melt away. As you are going out, keep on moving mountains. Keep on doing an exploit. You will have a testimony for your prayers. A testimony for your service. A testimony for every area of your life. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because we know it is done. For every brother, for every sister, for every worker, for every servant of the Lord, your power will increase in every life. In Jesus' name. Increase the faith of everyone. Empower everyone for greater service. And I pray, Lord, the word of their mouth will be the word of authority will be the word of power i pray miracles they have never seen exploits they have never seen manifestation demonstration of power they have never seen will begin from today in jesus name confirmation in every life manifestation in every life unction in every life upliftment in every life as others have been praying for you, you will now pray for others. As others have been bringing heaven your way, you will now bring resources and the riches of heaven to the lives of other people in Jesus' name. Go out in the power of the Lord. Succeed in the ministry. And let the word of your mouth bring multitudes unto the Lord in Jesus' name. As the Lord has empowered you, He will use you to empower many other people. You will not fail in ministry. You go from strength to strength and power to power, and your faith will be increasing and growing every time in Jesus' name. Be happy. The joyful, the strengthened, and the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your life. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.